You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. If you still haven't watched Primal, and you want an idea of what you're getting yourself into, the general story, or you're preparing to watch the later seasons, here's a recap of season one. Our main character, caveman named Spear, goes fishing and narrowly escapes death. He lives in a world where dinosaurs still exist. And after hiding from a pterosaur who smells his fish, he gets home a little later and sees tracks leading to his home. Hearing screams, he finds that two theropod dinosaurs have eaten his wife and his children. And he is helpless to do anything about it. Later it's revealed there are actually three dinosaurs, and they are the smaller versions of a much larger one who's probably their mother. Completely depressed at losing his family, he climbs to the top of a cliff and chooses to end his life. However, as the sun rises, he sees his wife and kids, and knowing they would have wanted him to live on, he chooses not to. Later, he sees a dinosaur. Thinking it's the same kind of dinosaur that killed his family, now he is living to avenge his family. This dinosaur is a female, and when he follows her inside her cave, it is revealed that not only is she not the dinosaur that killed his family, but she has two children, a mother with her two kids, who's all alone, just like his wife and kids had been before he got home and sadly couldn't save them. He can't bring himself to do it. And before anything happens, one of the Ceratosaurus looking dinosaurs shows up and attacks the mother Tyrannosaur and Spear helps her and her family. Spear and the mother T-Rex, I'm just calling her T-Rex, manage to stave off the dinosaurs and Spear kills the last one. After he defeats the dinosaurs, one of the baby Rexes hugs him. Aww. Seeing that they like him, the mother T-Rex tolerates him and agrees that he is a friend. After all, he did help to protect her children. But the relief is short lived as the much larger and parental dinosaur comes in to avenge her offspring. This much larger dinosaur ends up killing her babies and she is helpless. Working together, Spear and the mother dinosaur called Fang defeat the titanic predator. Fang is depressed after having lost her children. Feeling horrible, Spear leaves by the ocean side. He hears Fang following him. He probably still smells like her babies and she doesn't attack him and is actually quite submissive. She's sad and they agree to stick together, having both lost their families. <laughs> In River of Snakes, Spear finds it difficult to live with Fang. She keeps competing with him and taking all his food. Out of hunger and frustration, he reaches a tipping point and they actually turn on each other. Enough is enough. Spear tells her that she cannot have his food. As he holds up his weapon, Fang is outraged by this. The two newfound friends fight each other, but their battle is interrupted as they see a huge horde of snakes. The flash Flood sends the snakes careening towards them, and they actually work together to help each other. Spear tries to keep Fang from getting hurt by holding on to the snake that she's holding on to. And as they fall over the waterfall, Fang rescues Spear. She also brings back his weapon, the same one that she broke off when she was fighting him. They have a truce and they're friends again. This time, they work together to get their meals. And when they do, they share the spoils. We discover that Fang has a great fear of snakes. And when she's terrified seeing one come towards her, Spear kills it. A clear indication that they have each other's back. Cold death. As a herd of mammoth are traveling through the blizzard, a very old mammoth straggles behind. He is old and injured. He calls out for his family, but they can't hear him over the storm. As he is struggling, trying to find his way back home, the caveman, Spear, and Fang come out of nowhere hunting together to bring him down. They finally kill the mammoth. Spear uses his fur for his clothes, and they carry the meat with them. Fang refuses to carry it, leaving Spear to do all the hard work. As Fang and Spear hold up for the night in a cave, some prehistoric wolves are eating the carcass of the old mammoth. His family chase the wolves away and realize that their relative has been killed. They are angry and mourn over his death, and they realize that one of his tusks is missing. Being as intelligent as they are, they follow the trace of Fang and Spear. Spear reminisces of when his father taught him to hunt, and when he made his first kill, how they respected the creatures that they killed for food. Fang and Spear rudely awakened when they find the mammoths crushing their cave. As Spear goes to attack them with the tusk of the fallen relative, the leader mammoth looks at the tusks, realizing that that belongs to her family member. Spear too realizes this. He knows why they're angry and sad, and he agrees to give the tusk to the lead mammoth. After she takes it, she decides to leave Spear and Fang alone. At the end, we discover that there's a mammoth burial ground, and it's very important for them, and probably even spiritual, that they utilize all the body pieces of their family members to put them at this burial ground and to honor them. They all start doing this mourning dance, remembering their fallen brethren. It's a beautiful testament how intelligent these creatures are. Terror Under the Blood Moon 
Fang and Spear are running pell-mell away from a horde of dromaeosaurs. After they narrowly escape, they run through the tall grass, and something scares the dromaeosaurs. There is a blood moon rising. And this obviously means something. Fang and Spear see another humanoid carrying a kill looking to the sky in fear. The emaciated primate tells his other group members to come and get the food. He can't bring it to them and he's willing to take the sacrifice. One of their strongest go out to try and get it. Unfortunately, we see the reason why they're so afraid. Gigantic bats. Spear easily kills a lot of them after he rescues a little human person and brings him home along with the food. Spear is carried to a great tower by the bats that Fang and cannot get up. So she fakes being dead so the bats can lift her and carry her to the top of the tower. There she is piled on top of a lot of carcasses. There she also sees a bunch of cocoons. Oh no, that can't be good. When she bites into them, she sees that the people in there are mummified. There she sees the reason why, a gigantic spider. Fang rescues Spear and together they help defeat the spider. Not before the arachnid call the horde of bats that were protecting and feeding her. Strapped to some webbing, Fang and Spear make a jump for it. As the bats almost catch up to Fang and Spear, they go inside the tall grass where the bats are attacked and killed by the dromaeosaurs that were hiding there. It's a bloodbath. But Fang and Spear make it out okay as they fight with each other, narrowly escaping with their own lives. They literally ride into the sunset. Rage of the Eight Men. Fang and Spear make their way through a beautiful, serene jungle, and they find a paradise. It's their own little cove with fresh water. They could make this their home. There's fish, there's butterflies. It's easy living here, but all seems too good to be true. Poor Fang has some PTSD with sneaky looking objects, even as small as worms. How is he able to float with all that muscle mass? As Fang goes to sleep, Spear just enjoys this beautiful cove. But while he's underwater, he sees something. When he surfaces, Fang is gone. He sees that she was dragged into the forest. But before he can do anything, he is violently hit on the back of the head. He is brought to this ape clan with a whole bunch of primates, monkeys and gorilla looking people. Their pastime is fighting and beating each other, basically gladiators. As Spear is tied up and witnessing this whole ritual, he sees the shaman release a black gooey substance, which rolls down into the mouth of the strongest gorilla. This causes him to transform into a Hulk-like creature that's much larger than he was before and much stronger. Spear also sees that Fang is there. There are the skulls of other dinosaurs in the pit as well. When they finally release Fang, they do it to make her fight. She runs towards the hulking creature, ready to attack. Unfortunately, she didn't take into account how strong he was. Spear is unable to do anything. The gorilla puts a triceratops skull on. Fang tries her best to fight this thing, but he's just way too strong. After Fang is bested and severely injured, Spear gets loose, desperate to save her. And before the gorilla can deal the crushing blow, Spear takes his eye. An angry, vengeful Spear climbs the tower. Before the other apes can get to him, he kills the shaman and drinks all of the black goo. Of course, the other primates are absolutely horrified with this because only one drop was able to make the Herculean abomination below them. And apparently it is not normal for someone to drink the entire container. They try beating him, but he transforms. It's too late. He becomes a monstrosity. The gladiator tries to kill him. Now, Spear is much larger and much more powerful. He quickly kills the gladiator and rips his limbs off. As the other primates attack, it is a bloodbath. Like a literal bloodbath. Like blood, guts, flesh, everywhere, all over. Just monkey arms, legs, teeth, face, brain. It was the most gruesome episode that we've seen yet. After Spear transforms back to normal, he goes to check on his friend. Unfortunately, she's near death. When this first aired, there was actually a very long break after this episode, leaving people to wonder if Fang was going to be okay. It was also the saddest episode. Scent of Prey. We pick up where we left off with Spear crying over Fang. It's so sad to see who he considers the last member of his family dead. He lets out a pain-stricken, very sad cry before it is revealed that Fang is in fact still alive. Oh my god. Honestly, seriously. So sad. I keep making us cry over here. He is just so happy she's alive. After giving Fang some water, her barely able to keep her jaws open, he nurses her, makes a pace for all her wounds, and carries her on a self-made stretcher. As he carries her home, he dedicates his whole time to her, spending every waking moment defending her from predators. The episode's called Scent of Prey because creatures are trying to hunt her. Honestly, this is a very scary episode because as we see these dog-like creatures with their 
beautiful animations move towards the area where Spear is going and just stalking him, we know that they fully intend to kill and eat Fang. He finds a cave and puts her in, and as the canid, or African wild doll replicas, inch closer, he chases them away. Spear never sleeps, and the whole night he makes a fire barrier and stays awake. So do the dogs. When the tiredness finally overtook him, Spear awakes to a horror of seeing these bugs all over him and Fang. They're very prickly. As Fang is in and out of it, she witnesses how Spear, throughout the entire night, fights off every single thing that wants to eat her, and might as well not waste the food. He feeds her the prickly things, and in the morning tells her he's gonna get some water. He closes up the cave entrance and as he leaves fang falls back asleep later she can hear the sniffing and pitter pattering of the dogs outside trying to get in but spear comes back in time seeing that spear is all banged up fang tries to get up her legs still broken or at least fractured trying desperately to stand up and fight for him. He tries to calm her down, saying she's not ready, giving her confidence that it's okay, that he can take care of everything. But all she wants to do is protect him. And it was so sad, because you can truly see the love that they have for each other in this episode. Spear has an idea, and uses the sticky bugs as hand knuckle weapon things. The dogs have had enough and they want their food. After all, it's not fair that he be guarding all of it. He beats them up and after he is crowded by the canids, almost at death's door, a very protective fang bursts out from the cave and kills the dogs. Working together, fang and spear are happily a team again and fang is back. <laughs> Plague of Madness. A herd of sauropods graze in their home. They're all content, and there are many family units together. This specific individual in horror watches as an animated decaying Parasaurolophus runs from out of the bushes and bites his leg. This means nothing to the very large animal that simply just sends it flying and kills it. Very quickly, the small wound becomes larger. And there might be some passage of time here, or it could be immediate. Regardless of how much time has passed, what is very clear is that the sauropod who was bitten is now infected with whatever that Parasaurolophus had. With his body now decaying, his excessive thirst, and projectile vomits blood into the drinking water. As the poor sauropod's eyes turn, it becomes enraged and crushes all the eggs. When the male of the herd tries to stop him, with ease, the zombified sauropod kills him. Sadly, manic and sick, the infected sauropod kills its entire family. Fang and Spear are horrified at what they see. It's a graveyard of recently killed sauropods. Every single one of them looked as though they were killed in very horrible ways by something that clearly didn't want to eat them. Smelling the bodies, Fang determines that they smell very awful, and despite being the creature that she is, who would usually scavenge on these things, she is not touching those. As they are watching all the carnage, they find out that the infected sauropod is behind them. The thing chases them ceaselessly, and is much more atrocious and aggressive than it should be. It chases them down a ravine, and they go inside an opening in the rocks. They determine that it's dead and has fallen to its death. That night, Spear has a dream. He is eaten alive by this thing, and Fang is dissolved. Turns out that the thing is dead, it's still lying there, but as they walk past it, it reanimates. Even when they go to the lava pits, the thing chases them without any reserve. Despite being burned and despite being inside the lava, it still is able to somehow move, which is very horrifying. <laughs> other creature would have been dead by now. And Spear clearly saw that piece of it was rotted away and there was nothing inside of it left. So whatever this creature has become, it sure as hell is not the original creature. That creature is long dead and gone. Fang and Spear watch in horror as it only stops moving and making noise when it has turned to ash. Unfortunately, the poor animal is no more and must have suffered greatly. And we are left wondering what happened here? Where did this plague come from? And will it be seen in the future? Coven of the Damned. Fang and Spear are walking and they see an eerie green light. They discover a coven of some kind of witch-like creatures. They sacrifice a caveman, and their leader, or their great mythical member, lands on a pterosaur with green eyes that seems to be controlled by her. The coven watches as this figure changes shape into something strange. It steals the life force of this person and sucks him dry, and as a result, the spirit thing gives life to a baby. It is clear that these coven members cannot have children, and they all have girls. The pterosaur sees 
sees Fang and Spear watching and gives out a call. The magic spirit individual chases after them, and so does the rest of the coven, and she controls Fang. Unfortunately, Spear is captured, and as Spear calls out, Fang is brought back into reality, and she throws the coven woman off. But there is a very strong bond between Spear and his dinosaur. Not knowing what's happening, this small witch decides to make an opening in the ground to travel back in the past, or at least into their thoughts. She witnesses the day that Fang's babies were born. She witnessed when Fang and Spear first met and when her babies were killed. She hugs the poor dinosaur, understanding her loss and pain. Still frozen in time, she goes to Spear's memories. She witnesses the same thing of when his children were born and how happy he was. And he welcomed his children to the sun. Something softens within her, and she witnessed when Spear lost his family to those dinosaurs. She understands them a little bit better now, but it's still able to control Fang, but she is visibly bothered by their past. It is revealed that this witch, when she was given her baby, her little daughter, who had been chasing butterflies, accidentally fell to her death off the cliff, sending the witch into a deep depression and guilt. She knows the pain of the loss of a child. The witch who had lost her child fights off the spirit woman, and it's revealed why she still had control over Fang, so that she could use Fang to free Spear. The evil spirit woman transforms into a large wolf and fights Fang, but the nice witch turns into a crow and can controls Fang and tells her to get out of here. Fang takes Spear away. Nice Witch is injured and the spirit ends her life. As a result, the spell is broken off of Fang. Spear looks back, completely understanding that that woman sacrificed herself to save them. At the end, the Nice Witch is in paradise and rejoined with her daughter once more so they can be together forever. Night Feeder a saber-toothed tiger is killed by something, very fast and strong. Hearing the strange noise, Spear and Fang are on the lookout. Later that day, they come upon the remaining pieces of the saber tooth. Something about it terrifies Fang, who runs away from the corpse. Later that night, a ceratopsian herd are massacred. Later, Fang and Spear are chased into a fog, where a strong creature, kept in the shadows, gives chase after them. A creature so powerful, he can cut straight through trees. Spear has an idea and starts a fire, using the oily stuff that's on the ground all over the swamp. At sundown, when the creature comes out, it runs into their trap. Fang and Spear use the fire and trap the creature that is revealed to be some sort of weird dinosaur. His body was kind of slick with the stuff. Who knows, it's possible that that black goo that turns things super strong is probably responsible for this thing. They kill it as the fire billows into the night. Slave of the Scorpion. Fang and Spear are having a good time fishing until something horrific happens. A woman with a slave collar bursts from out of the water, scaring the bejesus out of Spear. I swear to God, I don't blame him. If that were me and I was fishing in the ocean and some freaking humanoid thing that I've never seen before just busts out in front of my face, I would shit myself. We quickly see what she was running from, some sort of mosasaur. After Fang and Spear fight it off, they run after the woman. She trips. But Fang and Spear are more curious about her than anything. Fang is more territorial over Spear. She clearly had come from some sort of slave ship or something because she came from the ocean and she's wearing shackles. She's terrified of Spear and Fang, but understands that they won't hurt her. Spear starts a fire so she can get warm. At night, Spear wakes up to see her worshipping what seems to be the moon. In the morning when they leave, she decides to follow them for safety. Interesting that she has a sun god tattooed on the back of her head, probably a branding from her masters. If she worships the moon, her enemies and captors clearly worship the sun. And having differences in religion is probably a further driving factor as to why the two groups of people don't like each other. When Spear makes a kill of meat. The lady doesn't want to eat raw meat. She takes berries and plants and makes a soup with some of the meat inside of it. Cooking it, she eats it. As she's seasoning her food... <laughs> I just love that part. As she's seasoning her food, they're eating their raw meat and they're like, well, goddamn. Man, that shit smell good as hell. She offers them a piece and they start fighting over the cooked food. Fang... Fang looks like she just got a first taste of cocaine. But Spear tastes it and he doesn't like it. He's okay with his raw meat. In the morning, the woman is visibly uncomfortable with a shackle around her neck. He tells Fang to break it like a freaking can opener. And Fang sets her free. The woman is really freaking tall. Spear completes setting her free by breaking her wrist shackles. Mia. I believe this is the first time we hear a character in this show speak. It is clear that she's a homo sapien and Spear is a Neanderthal. She spends a lot of time with Fang and Spear and she becomes part of their family, able to hunt and bring down food by the use of a bow and arrow that she made. There's so many things that she exposes them to that they've never seen before. She helps out and cooks Spear's food. She feels safe and happy with him and he too, for the first time, feels... <laughs> 
When Spear asks her what the scorpion thing on her head means by drawing it into the dirt, with the language barrier being there, she explains to Spear in the drawing and in her language that her village had been raided, and sadly she and her people had been kidnapped. As she was being taken back on the slave ship, Mira took the opportunity to escape and jumped overboard, which is why she was swimming away in the ocean. <laughs> She shows him the boss, who is probably what is akin to the Scorpion King. The drawing looked a bit like the gorilla they fought when he wore the Triceratops horns. Mira is invited to ride Fang, and she is totally enjoying it. Later, Fang asks her what's up with the moon thing. He can't understand her language, but she holds her hands close to her heart, which probably means that the moon represents her god and what gives her life and hope. In the morning, Spear and Fang wake up to find these ape creatures, like the same ones that Spear fought and tore apart to rescue Fang, kidnapping Mira. Because they were distracted with fighting the other apes, unfortunately, they get there too late, seeing arrows in a lot of the apes. To Fang and Spear's horror, Mira is gone, being taken away by a ship, something that Spear and Fang have never seen before. Spear had grown accustomed to Mira, and for the first time, we hear him speak. And so he makes a decision that he's probably gonna have to go after her. And that's a summary of season one of Primal. Seriously, if you were here and you have not watched the show, what are you doing? That little summary doesn't nearly or remotely hit on all the good moments that the show gives you. It truly is a breathtaking experience that reviews and recaps cannot give you. You simply have to watch it. So if you have not watched it yet, I implore you to go and watch it. It's a beautiful story with almost no dialogue because dialogue really isn't needed. The animation is perfect and every movement of every animation and decision that the characters make wraps you in. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.